Cook. We have the SES Deputy Commissioner, uh, Damian Johnson, uh, the, Re the Resilience Regional Coordinator, uh, Gary McKinnon, uh, the local member, the Ballina, Tamara Smith, uh, Sharon Coldwater, the Mayor of uh, Ballina Shire. We have uh, from Fire and Rescue, Stephen Hunt, the Deputy Commissioner of RFS, uh, Kyle Stewart, um, and the Unit Commander here at Ballina, um, Jerry Burnett, will also speak, but we're also blessed to be here with so many of the volunteers from the SES. And um, from my perspective today uh, with the Minister, it's, it's been a great opportunity to go out to some of the evacuation centres here in, in Ballina and meet uh, with many people uh, who have gone through an incredibly tough time. I must say uh, their spirits are incredibly high. Uh, their spirits are high and what, what we've seen here in Ballina uh, is the great Australian spirit. Uh, we've seen so many people come forward, um, whether they're registered volunteers to the SES, the RFS or any other government organisation. We've just seen members of the public come together and lend a hand. Uh, it has been flat out here uh, for the last uh, five days um, and it's been an absolute team effort. And to me, it just demonstrates why we should be proud to be Australians uh, because this coming together of community spirit and looking out for our neighbours um, and getting through, even speaking to many people who still don't know um, uh, if their homes will be there when they get back or what the extent of that damage, damage will be. So many people just saying, well, you know, there's, there's worse people off than I am. Um, and, uh, and, and the concern for, other people, for, for others, particularly in, in Lismore, Kawakau, other areas around the Northern Rivers who are also doing it incredibly tough. For those who have gone through a very difficult time, from, from my perspective as Premier and up, up here with um, the Minister, uh, we'll be doing everything we can. We're currently dealing with the immediate. We're dealing with the shock of the situation. We're dealing um, with getting people back on their feet into housing. We're still in a situation here in Ballina where telecommunications are down and down uh, through uh, much of the Northern Rivers. Uh, but we will get through this and then the long journey um, of the rebuild begins. I want to particularly thank, I had a great opportunity to privately meet um, with members of the SES here. Um, you know, they have done an absolutely amazing job, just like uh, our members of the State Emergency Services uh, right across our state uh, during uh, this difficult time. Uh, but they've been run off their feet. Uh, they don't know what day it is. Um, it's all become one. Um, and to, be, to hear the stories of the calls that they've had to make, not knowing if the person they're speaking to at the other end is the last call they'll ever make. It's been incredibly emotional, uh, but they remain incredibly strong. And it's the spirit of the people behind me uh, that I think makes everything great about our state here in New South Wales. And I know as Premier by speaking to them, it's their courage, it's their bravery, it's their spirit of service uh, that demonstrates why we've been able to get through what has been an incredibly difficult period of time uh, over the last few years. Uh, whether it's been floods, fires, drought, floods again, the pandemic, our people stand strong. And from a government perspective, um, we're gonna be here every step of the way because yes, there are temporary issues, uh, housing issues, telecommunication issues. The clean up is now beginning uh, right up here in the, in the Northern Rivers area. Many communities are still isolated and we'll try and get in as many of them while we're up here. Uh, but uh, we will get through this. Um, it's gonna be a journey, it's gonna be a long road, but I have complete confidence, not just based on what I believe the government response will be in making sure we put every single dollar in helping every single person get through this, every single business getting back on its feet. It's gonna be a tough journey. But what fills me with confidence is a spirit, the spirit of the local community, but ultimately the spirit of the volunteers that we have. Someone came across the road earlier on today and he was talking about the need for better government coordination. But he said, you know what, you know what steps up when, that, when that's not in place, when these shock one in 500 year floods occur, the community steps up. And the community, this place in many, in many ways has been run by volunteers for the last week. They've been non-stop since Sunday and they're still here today taking calls. We had telecommunication systems down we went back to the old ways of doing things up here and they did it and they 
They rescued many people, saved many lives. And that's a testament to each of the people behind me, the entire teams who have been here. Some of the people behind me have also lost their homes and they're here and have been here for five days, six days during that period of time, not looking after themselves, looking after their, the people in their community. Uh, and that gives me great hope in terms of the recovery that will come next and that I know the communities of the Northern Rivers, including right here in Ballina, will come out stronger the other side. A couple of other points, um, there's a few speakers today. Um, yesterday we had the first meeting of the crisis policy committee, um, which went through an entire coordination as we moved through. Certainly acknowledgement and the key ministers in the government who have portfolio responsibilities for the recovery and beyond uh, know that there is a long journey ahead and the expectation that the government will be there every step of the way to help our communities through. We made a decision yesterday that we'll be appointing um, a minister for flood recovery. That minister will be sworn in um, as soon as she can get back to Sydney. Um, and that will be Steph Cook. Um, in addition to her roles um, as the Emergency Services Minister, uh, she will be the minister in charge of flood recovery uh, for our state in coordinating all the various agencies, all the various issues um, that, occur, that occur across the board. We've done that in the past and I, I think it's incredibly important um, that the public service understand that there is a key person who doesn't just coordinate from a ministerial perspective those areas of, of the government, but in addition to that, all ministers uh, in my cabinet uh, who will have a role to play in ensuring that every single person um, gets through um, this difficult time. Finally, um, I'd like to make the point that we're obviously still seeing um, difficult conditions right across our state. Uh, this uh, flood event, um, wherever you are in, 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 in New South Wales, uh, is not over. Please do not be complacent. Uh, when there are evacuation warnings in place, please follow those instructions. Uh, when there are evacuation orders in place, please leave. Um, please don't drive through floodwaters. We expect to see flash flooding over the course of the week. I think Sydney you know, could have been much worse yesterday. We're very fortunate that it was not as bad as, as we anticipated. Obviously, we are still concerned about the Hawkesbury and Nepean area and flash flooding in other areas, and including particularly the Central Coast and Hunter regions. Uh, Steph Cook will provide some further information um, to that, but uh, it's not the time to be complacent. Uh, with following those instructions helps save lives, protects you and your family. To that as well, it protects these guys behind me. The guys put their life on the line protecting people and keeping them safe. Uh, and the best thing that we can do to help those volunteers that every single day uh, put their life on the line to look after us is to follow the instructions that they provide, the advice that they're providing in, uh, and that will ensure uh, that we continue to get through this. So finally, I just want to say, um, today being here is difficult. Um, it certainly gives me a great perspective of the challenges that have been faced over the past six days, and more importantly, the challenges that we'll face over the many long months ahead. Uh, but we will get through this. The spirit is high. And I just want to end uh, hearing some of the stories today and the emotion that many of these members have gone through in saving lives, in putting their lives on the line to get people through. Uh, in some ways, though, uh, fills me with great spirit, uh, knowing that the Australian spirit is alive and well in Ballina and right across our state. Now I'm going to pass to Steph Cook. So Steph will speak. Uh, then, we'll, then we'll hear um, from... Gary McKinnon, because the, obviously the coordination uh, will now be occurring in terms of the recovery and resilience New South Wales will be uh, playing a role in that. Um, Tamara Smith, the local member for Ballina, will then speak in terms of the challenges in the local area and what, and what um, her team and uh, what she's seen on the ground um, over the past uh, week or so. And then I think it would be important uh, to hear uh, from Jerry Burnage, uh, who's the uh, who's the commander here, because I think there's nothing better than to hear from the person who's led such a great team here on the ground uh, in Ballina, saving lives and getting people through. Steph. Thank you, Premier. Uh, well, I'm uh, both honoured and humbled uh, to accept uh, the role of uh, Minister for Flood Recovery. Uh, the Premier and Deputy Premier spoke to me about this 
uh, important role yesterday and uh, I'm all too happy uh, to take it on despite the challenges uh, that we see and are in front of us. These communities have been through a hell of a lot um, from surviving the initial emergency. Uh, we have a long road of recovery ahead uh, and I'm determined uh, to make sure that every single person uh, gets back on their feet uh, as quickly as possible. It is my privilege to lead a multi-agency response both in relation to the emergency itself and now uh, as we turn our attention to the recovery space to ensure that all government departments right across government are working closely with the federal government, with our other uh, agencies, with the not-for-profit sector, uh, with companies, uh, with non-government organisations and local government and the community itself uh, to ensure that no one is left behind, to ensure that we get our communities back on track as quickly as possible. I also want to pay tribute once again to the incredible courage of our volunteers across all of the emergency services organisations. I have the great honour and privilege of being here today with the RFS and supporting, of course, our SES, our local SES, and they have been working around the clock for days and days and days. Uh, they're sleep deprived, uh, they're just, you know, just hanging in there, but they are staying strong and I know, coming from their ranks, that they will see this through right to the end. Uh, in the toughest of moments, all you have to do uh, is look in their eyes and give them a hug and you instantly feel inspired and able to pick up and carry on. And I really want to uh, say thank you and, and really express that deep gratitude that I know people across this community have, but in fact people right across New South Wales have um, that deep gratitude they have for our SES volunteers and of course um, so wonderfully supported by the RFS, by Fire and Rescue New South Wales, by New South Wales Ambulance, by New South Wales Police. We've got the Volunteer Rescue Association, Surf Life Saving New South Wales and Marine Rescue New South Wales. These are the organisations that make up the emergency services uh, in New South Wales. Some 176,000 volunteers right across those services. Uh, and we, we've all, you know, we've all stood firm behind the SES during this time, helped out wherever we can. But of course it's been in partnership with what are truly wonderful communities. Uh, the spirit that I've seen in this, these communities today, it's just breathtaking, absolutely incredible. And spending time uh, in the evacuation centres with both volunteers, uh, with people leading um, the effort to, to set them up and make sure people are looked after. If you right would like to continue time. watching that.